Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. The Growing in Grace podcast, growingingrace.org. Oh, hi, Kitty. <laughs> hi, Kitty. I feel like I'm listening to Night Sounds with Bill Pierce. Yes. Night Sounds. And I can hear the sound of my cat, perhaps. I don't know if you can hear her motor running. Hello. And I had co- I've got some company with me for this podcast. <laughs> you, you need a deeper voice yes. to do Night Sounds. Yes, definitely. Um, he had a whole... He had a deep voice like... I mean... I mean, just like I don't think it was humanly possible, and no one else could have that. The, the only other person that doesn't even doesn't even really come close, but Chuck Swindoll has kind of a, kind of a deep voice, but not nothing like Bill Pierce. Yeah, when I was a young Christian, I I would you know listen to him going to sleep at night because he was on the radio late at night. Yeah, ten thirty or uh, something like that. That's the closest I think I've ever come to being hypnotized. <laughs> yeah, he had that effect. <laughs> I mean, and he probably realized, he probably realized he put a lot of people to sleep, but it wasn't through what he was saying. <laughs> it was probably how he was talking and just the time of day that it was. But yeah, he was really relaxing and, and uh, encouraging to listen to um, Night Sounds. That was a good one. Yeah. But yeah, the I, booming imagine voice. Imagine if he had of... been telling scary stories, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He could have, he could have hold, had a whole different career if he wanted to. <laughs> yes, like being a pastor. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I, I just on that subject, I, the work van that I've been driving, I, I uh, tuned into a Chuck Swindoll broadcast the other day, and the way that he was saying something, he's just got this booming voice, and he says stuff that nobody else could say because he can say it with with this booming voice. I can't even remember what he was talking about, but it was interesting. I used to listen to Chuck a lot, Chuck Swindoll, when I was younger, too, in uh-huh. the early Christian days. But um, you can forgive me for that. Um, so, yeah, talking about the forgiveness of God. Last week, I hope that people were set free and understood what we were talking about, that it's just huge, hugely taught in the church, that if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. But if you do forgive others, then God will forgive you. So we spent the whole of last week's episode talking about that. So go back and listen to that podcast number 840. And other issues, other questions come up when we talk about the the complete forgiveness that we have in Christ, that we, we can't be any more forgiven than we already are because we've already received all of the forgiveness that we're ever going to get. And so, again, people will say, what if you don't forgive others? God will forgive you. And they'll also say, well, don't we have to confess our sins? Don't we have to ask for forgiveness uh, every time we sin? So we'll get into this. If you have to ask for forgiveness every time you do something wrong, if you have to confess every single sin, what about the ones you miss? You know, what if you miss? Well, then we got the whole blanket confession. You know, so God... Forgive me for this, this, and this, these specific things that I know that I did, or I confess these to you, and I know there's ones that I can't remember, so would you forgive me for those too? Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if it really is, if there really is this requirement that you have to ask for forgiveness specifically for every sin, or confess every sin, do you really think that that would work with God? Maybe some people think it does. I don't know. But to me, it, it just, it never made sense. Even though I used to do that, you know, I used to do that. I used to, I, that's what I used to do. When I thought I had to confess every sin, I would specifically know I've, I've done this, I've done this, and I've done this. So I would confess those, ask for forgiveness. And then I would say, and then I know that I've done some other things. So would you forgive me for those? But all the while that I was doing it, it just didn't make sense. I thought, is God really going to forgive me for those things that I'm not even confessing? So I, I kind of worried about that a little bit. And I know other people have been in deep bondage to 1 John 1, 9. You know, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so, um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that and, and whatever else comes up as we're, uh, we're kind of heading a little bit toward Hebrews. Because in, in the book of Hebrews, 
man, this topic of forgiveness through the blood of Jesus is just laid upon us in a real heavy way, in a real good way. But uh, we got some other things to share up till then. I'm starting to feel like we're on Route 66 here, trying to get to Hebrews because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's a long trip. It's it's a it's cross country <laughs> because you just triggered all kinds of things with what you were just talking about. <laughs> I mean, because I I've been down that road. You know, last week I mentioned uh, in in Clash of the Covenants, my book, uh, one of the longest chapters is the Lord's Prayer. That is probably rivaled by another chapter called the the Sin Confession Obsession, because that that was. Uh, just a big part of my Christian life for so many years. And it was so frustrating because, you know, you thought you were doing what you were supposed to do with trying to confess all the sins. Like you said, Joel, if you couldn't remember them all, which nobody could, some of them you might not even be aware of, then you'd just do the the whole blanket thing and say, well, forgive me for what I can't remember. Uh, Forgive me for everything. Cleanse me again. And let's start this thing over and I'll try harder. Uh, And this went on and on, and I'm sure this is very familiar with a lot of people who are listening right now, but the the math was all fuzzy. It was fuzzy math. It was like trying, uh, for me now, to look at a prescription bottle and actually read it. Um, (laughs) It's very difficult to do. And and so it just doesn't add up, does it? So if you want to do that, if you want, which I did for for decades, really, if you want to do that, um, you better get an animal. Maybe look in the Old Testament there in that first covenant and find out exactly how to go about doing that, which animal to choose. and Because, you see, your confession, my confession of whatever sin that we've committed, whatever shortcomings we've had, asking or confessing doesn't bring a renewed forgiveness. It doesn't. Because, you see, in order for forgiveness to occur, blood had to be shed. That didn't change when Jesus came along. That's why he shed his blood. But here's the difference between him and and the old way. You know, we, we think we think because Jesus died and shed his blood that we no longer need animals. But the scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There there's there there isn't any. And, and so you would have to keep sacrifice when you confess your sins, like the Jews did, um, you would uh, kind of confess your sins onto the animal and, and the blood would be shed. The bad news is you would have to do it over and over again because the sins were not taken away. They were only covered up. That's what an atonement is. It covers them up. It's like throwing a rug over a stain you know, on the floor, but the, you know, the stain is still there whether you can see it or not. Well, with forgiveness that comes through Jesus, this is why he, he was sacrificed once. The Bible makes a big deal out of this, once for all. Speaking of the Bible, Joel, I mean, when I was a young guy, even a child, I'll bet one of my confessions was, forgive me for not reading my Bible today, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I was told that I needed to do that, and that became law to me. Here's a revelation for a few of you out there. Not reading the Bible book is not a sin, okay? <laughs> so I would get into all this kind of condemnation out there and, and try to get forgiven all over again. And, and when, when we were talking about forgiveness last week, when, when you realize the power of God's grace and, and the forgiveness that came through a once-for-all sacrifice through the shed blood of Jesus, this is why... This is why God is no longer counting our sins against us, because why? Because the forgiveness has already been dispensed. The faucet, it never shut off. And so um, I feel like I've been talking for a while, and I better let you step in here, Joel. (laughs) But I just want to encourage people out there, that whole confession thing that people talk about, well, God will forgive you no matter how many times you ask him. There's even better news than that, right? It is even better. Um, It's the once- for all forgiveness that we have, and just like you said, all all the things I've been talking about, all the things you were talking about, sparked all kinds of things in me too. So it's, <laughs> but this is good. Uh, you know, you're talking about the blood. Without blood, there is no forgiveness. Ephesians one seventeen. We talked about this a few weeks ago, but I just want to go back to it. In Him, in Christ, we have redemption through His blood. Through His blood. Let's do it in the deep voice. It'll make <laughs> more impact. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, 
and and it goes on, but I, just to focus on the part there that talks about how we have redemption through his blood, not through through our ongoing confession or asking for forgiveness, but it's something that he's already given us. It's, all, it's according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound toward us. It's already been done. He already made it abound toward us. He already shed his blood. We already have, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. It's not something that we keep on getting over and over again, because again, he would have to shed his blood over and over again. And when we do get to Hebrews, we'll definitely talk more and more about that. And so that does beg the question, well, what about 1 John 1, 9? I don't know how much we'll be able to get through it in this podcast with just a couple minutes left. But John, in, in 1 John, John was making, he was writing a letter to a, ch- a church. Uh, and, and a lot of people believe it was Ephesus, the church in Ephesus. But, but either way, in any given fellowship, especially back then, you had people who were believers you also had people who were kind of maybe on the fence. They were there to hear about things. So John says at the beginning of this letter, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which, our, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So he's telling these people, we've looked upon Jesus. We've seen him with our eyes. We've handled him concerning the word of life. The life was manifested. We have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen. See, this is all good. This is all good context here. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So if he was writing only to people who already believe, well, of course, all believers are already have fellowship with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So he's wanting to convey a message to some people who don't already have fellowship with the Father and with Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. So he goes on to talk about some things. It's a message that we have heard from him. We declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. As for the believer, Paul says we are already in the light. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. That's 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. You were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Ephesians 5.8. Several different times, Paul talks about how we are uh, one spirit with the Lord. We've already been joined to him. People have died to the law so they may be married to Jesus Christ. We've already been forgiven and cleansed of all sins. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. I already read Ephesians 1, 7. We got to wrap it up for this one. I'm really just getting started with this, but these things that John is saying that people need to be not in darkness but in the light and they need to walk in fellowship with the Lord and all of these things are true already of believers so he's giving a message to some people so that they can also have the same fellowship we'll get into that next week right here on Growing in Grace this has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski heard online through various internet sources around the world each week Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.